chapter two of the secret life of water. Let's listen carefully. Let's listen to the voice of water and steep ourselves in the fantasy world created by water crystals. Someday we will return to water and become a part of the natural flow. Filled with amazement, your heart and your step will be lightened. Such a feeling will show you the most beautiful sight you've ever seen. There's no need to resist the flow, no need to be afraid of moving forward. And the reason is that you are water. Chapter 2, Water's Healing Melody If you find yourself feeling down, overwhelmed by the daily grind, or offended by an unkind word or act, then I suggest you try something. Simply look at water. Walk to the edge of a nearby pond or a stream and cast your eyes on the gentle waves reflecting the sun. If it's raining, find a puddle and watch the raindrops make rings that appear and disappear. Or while you are washing dishes at the sink, gaze at the geometric creations made as the light from the window mingles with water cascading downward. I recommend this because you will discover that water takes you to another world where you will feel the water within being washed clean. You will be able to return to who you really are. You have just forgotten for a while that you are water. As you let the water flow gently through your mind and your body, it will heal you at your core. The flow of water has much to teach us. In fact, the act of living is the act of flowing. It's almost as if the water within your body has a desire to flow, in the same way your soul must also flow. When your soul is allowed to flow, you feel a burden lifted from your weary body, for the soul and the body are simply two sides of the same coin. If you have been offended, forgive the offender, and if you feel oppressed for your own offenses against others, forgive yourself. Forgiveness opens up the path for you to naturally and freely flow towards your future. The universe holds something potentially wonderful for you at each passing moment of life. Open yourself to the good things flowing toward you, and you will be able to reach out and welcome a wonderful future into your bosom. If you can't get over a broken heart no matter how hard you try, the last thing you can do is go back and change the past, but there always remains the possibility that the flow of life will take you to a place more wonderful than you could have hoped for. Every second of life is a new crossroads with new possibilities. If you can realize this, you can free yourself from your burdens. You will see how trivial your problems are and you will no longer need to be tied to the past. Water teaches us how to live, how to forgive, how to believe. If you open your ears to the possibilities in life, you may just be able to hear the sound of the pure water that flows through your body even now. It is the sound of your life, a melody of healing. Water is part of the rhythm of life. The water flowing within us is part of the water flowing through nature and part of the rhythm of life being played out throughout the universe. In Europe and other parts of the world, it has long been said that the moon rules over water. The ocean's tides are directly affected by the movements of the moon. Perhaps low and high tides are the most visible response to the moon, but wherever life is to be found, there is certain to be a link to the movement of the moon. The clam feels the gravitational pull from the moon and opens its shell at high tide. The breeding cycle of the sea urchin is exactly in line with the lunar cycle and seagulls come to shore to lay their eggs almost always on the evening of a full moon for reasons other than the increased light. We could hardly expect that human bodies consisting of 70% water would be the exception. More babies are born when there is a full moon, as any midwife will tell you. The female reproductive cycles in time with the moons. Many people with sharpened sensitivities say they are energized on nights when the moon is full. Full moon energy is linked to insanity and in stories of werewolves. Even the word lunatic comes from the root lunar. 
It makes perfect sense that most of the ancient cultures of the world have relied on the lunar calendar to measure time. The lunar calendar, which is closely aligned with the cycle of life, was an important tool for planting and harvesting crops. When our rhythm is in line with the movement of the moon, we can more easily align to the flowing of the water within us. This is nothing less than living life to the beat of the drum played by the rhythm of nature. It is also a piece of wisdom mostly lost on modern man. Similar to the lunar calendar is the 13-month calendar used by the Mayans, which is somewhat different from the lunar calendar. I learned about Dr. Jose Argelis and his wife, Loidine, who have made it their cause to print copies of this calendar and spread its use throughout the world. They believe that if the calendar is used on a global scale, then people will start to live within the rhythm of nature, thus opening paths that lead to solutions for many of the problems faced by modern society. According to this calendar, the new year starts on July 26, when the 365 days of the year are divided by 28. The days in each month you get 13 months and one extra day. On the Mayan calendar, this extra day of the year was called the day out of time. All work was laid aside, prayers were offered, and prosperity was celebrated with laughter and dance. While changing to a lunar-based calendar may not be practical or desirable for everyone, we can attend to the moon and the rhythm of life in our own ways. The human body is a tiny universe of its own. Being in tune with this grand universe within allows us to fully experience the energy flowing from the cosmos. When we return to living as one with the universe, we will rediscover the simplicity and spontaneity we were intended for and that was intended for us. The number of people in the world searching for inner healing is vast and it may include you. Perhaps the reason is because the environment we have created for ourselves has evolved too fast and now we find ourselves in a world of pain and fatigue of our own creation. How do we save ourselves from it? Listen to the melody flowing from the world around you. When you can feel this rhythm flowing within the water that makes up your being, then you will become one with the water crystals. This is the life that so many of us are searching for. It's the healing experience that we know deep in our souls is waiting for us. Everyone is searching for healing. Music as a healing force. Alan Rubick is an American pianist who has based his musical career on the principle that music has the ability to heal. In addition to being a performer, Alan is a music producer for television commercials and films, and he also has his own recording company. His piano music has no rival in clarity. Many who listen to it say that they feel like their bodies become transparent. Alan had an experience when he was a young boy which convinced him that music has the power to heal, and since that time he has based his career on writing music for healing. He started playing the organ at age three as a child prodigy, and from the age of nine he focused on the piano and on writing and performing. But in his teen years, his life took a sudden change. He injured the ulnar nerve in his right arm during physical education class at school, making it painful and nearly impossible to move his fingers. For several months, he was unable to play the piano. The muscles in his fingers began to weaken. It seemed as if the road to his future had suddenly come to an insurmountable impasse, and the realization that he would likely lose the music which he loved so much sent him into a deep depression. He tried thinking about other futures, but he always found himself sitting in front of the piano. And then one day, perhaps in utter desperation, he put his hands on the keyboard and let whatever was in his heart come out. Alan says that what he felt at that moment was something like happiness in his fingers. He could feel the life energy flowing through his hands and the resonance between the sound of the piano and the movement of his fingers. Alan's hands began to recover almost immediately and it wasn't long before he was able to play as good as before or even better. I first met Alan in 1995 through an introduction by the scientist who had invented 
the Magnetic Resonance Analyzer, MRA, a HADO measuring instrument that is capable of measuring minute vibrations. With the cooperation of the scientists, we asked Alan to compose music that would express the healing powers of HADO. We wanted to have healing music that would be capable of boosting the body's immune system. When the score was completed and recorded, we exposed water to it, and as might have been expected, crystals formed from the water were exceedingly beautiful and delicate, typical of healing characteristics. When we showed photographs of the crystals to Alan, he said that he was surprised to see that all the crystals formed were identical to the images he had in his mind when he was composing the music. Alan is one of many artists who is highly aware that music is a form of healing, but we also know that the classical music from the past, famous jazz pieces, and folk music from the corners of the world also have the ability to heal in their own individual ways. I exposed water to classical music from various composers and then took photographs of the resulting crystals. Then we took HADO measurements of the photographs with the MRA. The results revealed the HADO, emotional and physical, affected by the music. Some of these results I shared in the true power of water. Here are two additional findings. Wagner's Ride of the Valkyries, Emotional Hado, Self-Pity, Physical Hado, Alleviation of Indirect Pain, Debussy's Prelude to the Afternoon of a Fawn, Emotional Hado, Environmental Stress, Physical Hado, Alleviation and Prevention of Back Problems. What this all means is that good music has the ability to guide us on the path of healing. It seems that this is especially the case with classical music which has stood the test of time. When water is exposed to this music, my research has found that the water becomes energetic and beautiful crystals are formed. Music is also a representation of the time and environment in which the music was composed. If you look back on different periods in history, you'll find that different periods are characterized by certain music. This is because the types and degrees of stress that society experiences change with the times and require healing. This results in the creation of music that harmonizes with the frequency prevalent in society. Consider the, consider the jazz that came out of New York beginning in the 1940s. Toru Yazawa, a member of a popular band in Japan known as Alice, once shared with me a brief history of jazz. Jazz got its start with the blues, sung and played by African Americans. When this music was combined with the brass bands of New Orleans, the result was the vivid and liberal genre known as New Orleans jazz. The jazz of this period was mostly simple three chord melodies, which is why it sounds simple and blissful. Over time, the center of jazz moved to New York, and in the years after the end of World War II, a new form of jazz called modern jazz started to emerge. Modern jazz consists of complicated chords. 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 Sounds that would normally create a roar were combined, and then other sounds are piled on top of each other, resulting in the uniquely gloomy, avant-garde feel of modern jazz. During that time, New York City, as well as the whole United States, was experiencing uneasiness and anxiety over the emergence of the Soviet Union and other threatening enemies, creating the atmosphere that led to the Korean and Vietnam Wars. Those who lived in New York, a melting pot of different people, in that particular time were experiencing a type of stress never felt before. Perhaps simpler music, free chord, was needed for healing simpler human relations, while more complex music was needed for healing more complex human relations. Simply put, music, in addition to being art and providing entertainment, is more than anything a form of healing. Healing with Hado. As I mentioned in my book, The True Power of Water, I am keenly interested in the field of Hado medicine. Hado medicine focuses on the underlying cause of the symptoms of illness in contrast to the medical practices which require that we take pills or undergo surgery to deal with symptoms of disease. 
Hedo medicine deals with the unique vibration of the illness itself. I can say with certainty that the day will come when Hedo medicine is widely accepted. Most people today go to the drugstore to find solutions for their ailments, but perhaps one day instead of getting a prescription of medicine, you will get a prescription of music to heal what's ailing you. Such a day may not be as far away as you think. All symptoms of illnesses vibrate at a unique frequency. By knowing the frequency, it is possible to overlap the exact opposite wavelength on top of the symptoms wavelength. Thus, the frequency of the illness is dissipated and the symptoms are alleviated. This is already in practice to some degree with treatment for Parkinson's disease and other neurological illnesses. Hayden medicine not only deals with the specific body part where symptoms are located, it also helps to alleviate the real cause behind the sickness, which is often negative emotions. For example, if a person is experiencing liver problems, then we will also almost always find that the person has anger issues. The wavelength generated by anger is the same as the wavelength generated by the molecules of the cells that make up the liver. So the wavelengths of anger and the liver are in tune with each other. In the same way, the emotion of sadness is in tune with the blood. And so sad people tend to be easily plagued by leukemia and hemorrhage type strokes. Continued irritability damages the nervous system, often leading to pain, sensitivity, and stiff muscles in the lower neck and shoulders. An important aspect of Hado medicine is that the human body is considered to be a universe of its own. Our bodies consist of some 60 trillion cells, each carrying out its specialized responsibility while simultaneously harmonizing with other cells in a wonderful way to make us who we are. The organs, nerves, and cells of the body have their own unique frequency. The body is like a grand orchestra consisting of the harmonization of various sounds. When something goes wrong somewhere in our body, there is discord with one of the sounds, and when, it, and when even one sound is out of pitch, the entire composition is not as it should be. A dentist named Kazumasa Maratsu has seen significant results with patients he has treated based on the perspective that teeth are nothing less than organs of the body. In one instance, one of his patients was unable to clench her hands for many years, but when Dr. Maratsu removed the metal fill fillings on her upper teeth and adjusted her bite, she regained full use of her hands. She also found that she no longer suffered from chronic pain in her lower back and her right leg. This indicates that teeth have an effect on the entire body and complications of teeth can influence the rest of the body in totally unpredictable ways. Dr. Maratsu, in fact, says that the teeth are one part of the core control center of the body. But modern medicine sees the human body as a machine consisting of various independent parts, and the healing they provide deals only with taking care of the particular defect of the particular part that's gotten out of order. But if one symptom is attended to and followed by something failing elsewhere in the body, then true healing has not really taken place. Hedo medicine is all about dealing with the health of the entire body, which is why the word healing and not curing is more appropriate. Other forms of Hedo medicine. We can see that Hedo medicine holds tremendous promise, but I don't want to give you the impression that this technology is anything new. The principles were well known by the ancient cultures and incorporated into their daily lives. In fact, there have been many cases where the wisdom of the distant past has been re-examined to discover that the applications are still valid in our day. The use of flower essences is one ancient method of healing that has paved the way for Hado medicine. The energy and vibration of flowers is transferred to water, and by drinking this water, the patient receives both physical and mental healing benefits. You might postulate that during the transferring process, it is the actual components of the flower that are dissolved in the water, but actually it is only the vibration that gets transferred. Therefore, a chemical analysis of flower essence will detect only water. The science of flower essence was established by a British bacteriologist named Dr. Edward Bach. 
He developed essences known as Bach flower remedies, which can now be found throughout the world. In fact, flower essence therapy has expanded to incorporate the characteristics of individual countries. A popular form of flower essence in Japan is called Findhorn flower essence. In northern Scotland, near Loch Ness Lake, there is a community called Findhorn where people from all over the world have come together to live and participate in events and workshops related to living as one with nature and finding one's true way through life. Marion Lee introduced flower essence therapy at Findhorn. She is a woman whose smile has the brilliance of flowers. I interviewed Marion when she came to Japan several years ago. She told me, Our bodies serve as a tool for accomplishing spiritual missions. In order to carry out our mission, we need to release the warped feelings and emotions. Fear and grief, sadness, suspicion, impatience, weaknesses, and apathy that form a block between the spirit and the body. Such emotions become the cause of many of the symptoms that we experience. Our modern medicine is for the most part unable to deal with the roots of our illnesses, but this is an area where flower essence has proven to be effective. According to Veda philosophy from India, there are seven places on the human body called chakra points that serve as the portals for unseen energy to enter the body. It is said that flower essence makes use of these chakras to heal certain ailments and parts of the body depending on the characteristics of the flower. The gorse flower prevalent around the area of Findhorn has a vibration of joy and passion and can be used to effectively deal with a lack of energy depression and the weakening of the immune system. Scottish primrose is a symbol of peace and is used to calm and harmonize during times of fear or panic. The cherry blossom can be made into an essence that has the ability to return you to your inner path. It can effectively be used to help you overcome negative patterns of thinking and feelings of inferiority that weigh you down while helping you to regain feelings of love and compassion. To make your own flower essence, go outside on a bright and sunny morning and collect flowers. Cut each flower at the stem, being careful not to touch the flower itself with your hand. Then put the flowers in a container filled with fresh and pure water and set it in the sun. In about four hours, the essence of the flower will be transferred to the water. You can add a little brandy to make the water last longer. Store the water in glass bottles and as you use it, dilute it even more with water. As needed, put a few drops on your tongue. Your body and soul will feel the effect without the typical side effects of modern medicine. I decided to see what would happen if I diluted such essence and made crystals. The crystals that resulted were all very beautiful, not unlike the flowers themselves. Vibration is something you can't see with the naked eye, which is why it is difficult to verify the positive effects of Hado healing using modern analysis and medical examinations. However, we shouldn't be too quick to say that there can be no benefits without scientific verification. Many recognized home remedies do in fact make use of the principle of vibration. Homeopathy as a form of vibration-based medicine has the ability to heal the body by using vibrational water. Homeopathy is a medicine in which like cures like. To treat an illness, the poison that causes the symptom is diluted with water by 10 to the power of 10 and sometimes even by 10 to the power of 600 or more. The poison, diluted to almost an incomprehensible level, is then given to the patient. Lacquer, for example, often causes a rash when it comes in contact with skin, but when a homeopathic remedy is made using lacquer, it can be used to treat rashes and skin injuries. Freshly cut onions cause tears and a runny nose, but a homeopathic remedy made with onions is good for treating colds, hay fever, and some allergies that have symptoms of teary eyes and a runny nose. This is referred to as the law of similars. Homeopathy got its start when a German doctor named Samuel Hahnemann, Hahnemann, noticed that the essence of the bark of the 
Cinchona calisea, which is used to treat malaria, brings on symptoms of malaria when extracted and taken orally. Common man developed his theory of homeopathy and announced it in the early part of the 19th century. Thereafter, homeopathy gradually spread throughout Europe and the United States. This was a completely new type of medicine and it was widely prescribed because of the noticeable benefits. By the middle of the 19th century, more than 400 homeopathy clinics existed. Even physicians to the royal family in England started practicing homeopathy in 1830. In America, homeopathy was so popular by around 1900 that one in five physicians specialized in it. But then medical associations began to form with the intention of getting rid of homeopathy practices. Such organizations, hand in hand with pharmaceutical companies, brought enormous pressure to bear and soon homeopathy was forgotten. This is just one more example of how the most beneficial things often receive the most negative pressure. But while homeopathy was once cast aside, it is again starting to regain its former reputation. Homeopathy is now taught in 30 or more medical schools in England and state-operated hospitals now specialize in it. In France, homeopathic remedies can be purchased at the neighborhood drugstore. About 10% of German doctors are homeopathic physicians. In recent years, a homeopathy medical association has been established in Japan and more and more people are becoming aware of the benefits of this practice. Healing comes in unexpected forms. 200 years ago, homeopathy was recognized as an effective form of medicine and many people over the years can testify to its effectiveness, but it goes mostly unrecognized by modern medicine. I know of one well-known scientific journal... Stop it. Be nice. Be nice. nice. It's okay. Um, it's okay. Calm down. Marie, stop. It's okay. It's okay. <sighs> okay. Healing comes in unexpected forms. 200 years ago, homeopathy was recognized as an effective form of medicine, and many people over the years can testify to its effectiveness. But it goes mostly unrecognized by modern medicine. I know of one well-known scientific journal that has featured article after article supporting the benefits of homeopathy, but the articles, often published with a note of derision from the editor, have gone mostly ignored. Many in the scientific community would say, we know that a lot of people use it, but there is no scientific proof for the benefits of homeopathy. If homeopathy had no benefits, don't you think it would have been forgotten a long time ago? I will be the first to admit that saying that water has the ability to read and memorize information turns scientific common sense on its head, but such unscientific phenomenon are more common than we may think. Dr. Teruo Higa, a professor at Ryukyu University in, in Okinawa, has been striving to spread the use of a form of organic bacteria he developed called Effective Microorganism, EM. EM is a liquid formed from bacteria. It has been shown to be perfectly safe, even beneficial for people in the environment. When EM is applied to soil, the result is a bountiful crop without the use of chemicals or synthetic fertilizers. When used to treat polluted water, the water becomes drinkable. It can even be used to treat the dioxin resulting from the burning of refuse. While Dr. Higa was doing research on EM, he had a strange experience. He poured the EM liquid in a ceramic container, poured it out and then cleaned the container, but the properties of EM persisted. He washed the container repeatedly, 
but he couldn't get rid of the EM properties. He tried to sterilize the container with high heat, but even that failed to eliminate the EM properties. This gave Dr. Higa an idea. He transferred the EM into a new ceramic container at 700 degrees centigrade, a temperature that certainly would allow no life form to survive. The bacteria survived and became baked into the ceramic. This goes against scientific common sense, but EM ceramic has proven to work and now has various uses in the home, such as water treatment and building materials in the environment and in agriculture. We can say that this is another indication of HADO science. All matter has its own HADO and water relays this information. The molecules of water carry messages like the magnet of a computer disk. HADO can be either beneficial for life or harmful for life. But even if the vibration is good for life, if water, the mediator, is impure, the HADO will not be relayed correctly. Dr. Higa asserts that in nature there exists both a flow of revival and a flow of destruction. For example, if a piece of fruit is left sitting, it will soon rot and emit a foul smell. This is the flow in the direction of destruction. But fermentation is the flow of revival. Fermentation is a process that creates sauerkraut, yogurt, bean paste soup, soy sauce, cheese, liquor, and many other foods. Both fermenting and rotting are the work of microorganisms, but they are not the same. EM is a collection of microorganisms that do the work of revival. When EM is added to the soil, it enhances the power of existing microorganisms. The result is high quality vegetables without chemicals or synthetic fertilizer. EM is completely safe for humans and it doesn't deplete the soil. In contrast, consider chemicals and synthetic fertilizers. Chemicals do eliminate harmful insects and synthetic fertilizers do ensure bigger crops, but their use kills even the good insects along with all the microorganisms that would normally enrich the soil. Chemicals provide instant gratification, but the long-term and lasting result is destruction of the soil. In fact, much of the farm soil now in use is, according to most definitions, lifeless. We alone have the power and responsibility for restoring the cycle of nature. Many aspects of our modern society appear to be in destruction mode. For the pursuit of momentary pleasure and convenience, the cyclical laws of nature have been ignored and replaced by the convenience of use once and throw away. And we are beginning to hear the groaning from our tortured planet. We are at a point when we must realize that if we want to continue to call this planet our home, we need to change, not the planet, but ourselves. We have to stop being agents of destruction and start becoming agents of revival. The slogan, from a destructive type human being to a revival type human being, may be added to our list of slogans by which we will live from now on. One of the most beautiful sites you'll find in Japan is a group of tiny islands not far from Hiroshima. Hiroshima? Hiroshima. Starting in 1998, the people who lived on the islands got together and decided they had to do something about the polluted water that surrounded them. Batches of EM were made and distributed to each home by volunteers with instructions to put it in their drains. The results were immediate and unmistakable. The clumps of sludge along the shore disappeared and schools of fish began to return. There are now octopuses and abundant clams, something that had existed only in the memories of the oldest inhabitants. The area is known for its seaweed crop, and when EM was added to the water used to wash off the harvested seaweed inland, sludge in the ditches and waterways was soon gone and even the seaweed quality improved. A nearby village called Ekitsuchu heard about the success and they also distributed EM for free to the villagers, and again the effects were immediate. The waterways became clean, frogs returned, and clams started appearing in the once barren bay. The waters near Akitsuchu produced some of the best oysters in Japan. When the town's residents put clods of dirt containing EM into the oyster beds, the quality of the ocean water improved, resulting in bigger and better crops than in recent memory. The use of EM spread quickly along the coast, culminating with the formation of the Sito Inland Sea Environment Conservation Council in 2002. 
The people along the coast have taken the first important step to restore the revival and circulating type of society. Healing isn't only about the recovery of our own physical health. We need to think about the healing of the land, the rivers, the oceans, and the planet in its entirety. But what does healing the planet really mean? The answer is a return to the circle of life, the circulation of resources, of water, and of life. That is our responsibility as occupants of this delicate and crystal-like planet.